So, happy Good Friday everyone. Um, today I wanted to show you what Wexford Town looks like on Good Friday. I want to compare it to what it used to be because from 1927 to 2018 you couldn't buy alcohol and all the pubs were shut, all the, restaura all the restaurants, all the uh, shopping markets could not sell any alcohol. So Thursday nights was a mad panic. Everyone would go fill up trolleys and they would go around panicking for not having the ability to go get some alcohol on on Friday. So I wanted to walk around Wexford Town today. Just a quick show, see what it's like. Has it changed since six years of everything being opened up again? We're gonna walk around, maybe see that the, they're opened up. Maybe go for a sneaky pint on a Good Friday day now that we're allowed to. Um, see what, what's changed and how it's improved or has it improved the situation? I'll tell you a few stories about, you know, some what publicans have told me and what people have told me over the years on how it's changed. And we'll just, you know, just a nice glance. I stand outside here in front of Rose Street Church, which is one of the twin chapels. There's another one, which is Bride Street, which is just down the road. It's basically a replica of Rose Street. So at the time, the town was divided into two and they decided to, they didn't want to share the money in to have it in a cathedral so they decided to build two exact replicas one serving the southern part of the town and the other one the north so what we're going to do is we're going to walk around see what it's like um see if there's crack around because i remember when i first came here on like fridays everything would be dead like the towns would be dead a lot of the shops would be shut the only time that you would see a change will actually probably pop in and maybe show you what the like the Talbot was because I know a lot of people would actually stay in a hotel for Friday for Good Friday so that they as a resident in the, the hotel that was the only exception that you were allowed to have drink so people would actually make it a holiday where their friends and I would book a room in a hotel so that they can go into the pub in the hotel and have a drink now of course you don't have to do that uh, everything's opened up We'll see if how many of the pubs actually stay open. I know I walked by uh, Jim McGee's and I seen the doors open on that. So that's open. So I'm gonna stop it now. We'll start off at the beginning of the town. We'll go to the around Redmond Square where Dunn's is and we'll take a walk to the south of the town and we'll see what it looks like. So Dunn's stores is wide open. The people are able to come in and get their alcohol. So, first one is, Dunn's is like a normal day. Everyone's out, business is out. Laundry operators, please contact checkout, please. Laundry operators. Everyone's just doing their shopping, as you see. So, it's a normal Friday. Taxi ranks here. People are waiting. I wonder if it would be busier or quieter, because I know it used to be fairly quiet on a Friday, and uh, people would be out at house parties so they'd be busy enough in the later hours trying to travel around but every like all the pubs and that would be shut so for Dunn's it's a normal day now we'll just walk around the main town now while we were doing this I thought it'd be a good time to uh, talk about what's going on um, so uh, I am going to be going to Azerbaijan in less than two weeks I'm probably going to be doing something between now and uh, then with the exception of this video this vlog will be going up on Saturday week tomorrow um, I have a few things planned now I booked some time off for four nights in June from the 8th to the 12th and I've also booked off uh, some time for uh, October the end of October so that's another five nights so I'm planning on doing something so if anyone has any suggestions the trip in June what I'm thinking is doing another hitchhiking one I'll put the link of my hitchhiking one uh, first vlog that I did now this time instead of hitchhiking for 48 hours to wherever I go I'm going to have a destination so we'll have a sign so I have two choices I'm thinking about right now one is going to uh, hitchhike to Galway and then get the uh, ferry over to Inishmore on the Iron Islands. 
and then spend a couple of nights camping and then head back. The other option is going towards Cork in the west of Ireland and hitchhike to Baltimore. And from Baltimore, I'll take the ferry to, uh, to Cape Clear Island and do a couple of nights of uh, camping there. I, there's, they have a, you can pitch your own tent, which is cheap. They also have a yurt and then a different tent that you could rent with a bed and all that in it. So those are some options I'm trying. Let me know what you think. Um, and then of course we have Azerbaijan and then we have Pakistan September. So in October I have a, a date booked out, but I haven't had a destination yet. So let me know if there's any places you want to go. It'll be for like about a five night. I'm trying to keep it budget under around 500 euros for the accommodation and the flight. And I want to go to a different country that I haven't been. So I'm thinking the Baltic area slash because uh, the accommodation's not too bad, but let me know what you think. So right now the bookstores are open. The Asian shop, which is opened. So everything seems to be status quo. The uh, chemists are all open. Um, the charity shops are closed. At least Bernardo's is and St. Vincent de Paul. The uh, SP, works for WSPCA when that's opened up. And we have the bike shops are open. Green Acres, that's open. So they have high-end restaurant, art gallery, slash bottles of wine and whiskey, since that's specialty stuff, higher end. All the coffee shops seem to be open. So to me, look, walking around, business as usual. Um, like I said, going back six years ago, it would have been a somber evening. Everyone would be, all the shops would be shut, pretty much most of them. Um, so it seems like the grip of the Catholic Church has loosened on the state in the recent years. Um, yeah, see all the uh, charity shops seem to be closed. Um, Shaws is open. And this is the uh, Frank's place, which is joint with the uh, the one on the corner. Here we come to the bowling, Ring, which is the center of Wexford Town. Everything's open. You can see Mackins. Mackins is open. People are getting their cheeky pints. And there's the pikeman. Even the bowling market's open. Now this is open open on the Fridays and Saturdays, so but I think in the past that would have been closed. And there's another charity shop that's closed. And then here's a little market. You can get all sorts of little trinkets and stuff. And we'll keep waking on our way down. South of town, WR Hamilton and Sons. Open for business. So, I don't know, other than a few charity shops, everything seems to be running like normal in Wexford Town on Good Friday. So, now it's a destination that you can come over on the weekend. That reminds me, night machine, I have to get some funds out. Top up the Federal Reserves, I'm a little bit low on uh, cash cash, I have none on me. So we'll go and stop and get some. Photo phone shop, the bookstores are all opened. Shoe shorts. There's the uh, Santa Bridges Church, Church of Ireland. Even the uh, candy shop. I wonder if they have any of the candy that Emily likes. Let's take a look and see. Doo, doo, doo. Well, no joy with that. They had no cinder toffee. That's the only thing that Emily likes from there, so I usually pick her up when I go by. But if they always seem to be sold out or just like, every time I do go in there, I'm practically taking the last little bit of it. So, we're just gonna walk Take a look what's happening down Wexford Town. Here's the Natural House store. 
trend owns that. It's doing really well. Pound shop. Westgate Design is a good place to have all sorts of knickknacks, like art of, like very high-end uh, gifts. Yeah. Also, they have a great restaurant in the downstairs where you can go and get something neat. They even have good back breakfasts and that. So basically, I don't see anything that's uh, closed other than a couple of the uh, the charity shops. All the pubs seem to be open, and all the uh, supermarkets and all the the stores that sell alcohol and that, they're here at the, yeah, there's a charity shop that's open, Kex, and we'll just keep walking down to the uh, south end of the town and uh, see what's going on, maybe get a sneaky pint. It's very, like that town is quite busy, like it is still early in the day. When you think about it, it's uh, half eleven in the morning, and it's it's like a Saturday, as far as the crowd is concerned. Books there, book center is open. Boots. Now I went to get vaccines for my trip to Azerbaijan and Pakistan. I thought it was covered under my insurance, what the prescription was. So I got one for that covers me for three different things. But that ended up costing me 91 euros. Out. And then I had a bunch more for like rabies and something else, hepatitis and that planned. But the price on it was, I could have went on a foreign holiday if I would have got the other ones. There was two boosters for 153 each. Another one that was a 148 times two, 75 times three. Um, 47 95 times three and an air one that was a couple for two so if you add it all up together I could have went away to you know somewhere in Asia for a, a week or so for free so I got the two boosters in covers me for three different items so I'm gonna chance my arm with that like just a little bit here I have insurance health insurance and I also have uh, I have insurance for, um, you know, travel insurance and that, so between the two I'll be okay. If I do get sick or something, I could be shipped back to Ireland to be taken care of. I'm just not going to spend the bones of a thousand euros for a couple of vaccines. Yeah, I don't see anything that's, uh, that's not open. Just pass for... Out of the place. There's a vape shop. Don't see the point of those. I know they're supposedly better than cigarettes, but hasn't really been proven. Simon Lambert's there. That's a good place to go in for food, and it's also a pub. And they have they have Michael Brewery. They have a brewery up in uh, White Rock Hill that has the Ola Belly beer, which we took on the Salty Islands, uh, the uh, Salty Islands vlog when I went to Salty Islands. And I had a can of one of their their beers when we were having a picnic on the island. Uh, Salty Islands opens up in the 1st of April, so by next week it should be up and running. So if you wanted to book a, a trip to that, I highly recommend it. You can catch my video and see what it's like first. Um, and then just go for it. It's definitely worth it. Just popped my head into uh, Red Books. Uh, just had a few chat with some people. Uh, Wally, the owner, he's still away. He just got married uh, to his longtime partner and they're gone off to Paris for a week. So they're enjoying themselves. So his mother was there and we we're just talking a little bit. It's a beautiful shop to come in if you come to Wexford Town. Uh, Red Books, it's on my blogs. So I think I did it on the, the blog. I went to uh, the Opera House and it's in there a couple of times. So um, really good place. It's a million books and a million characters. So now we'll just keep walking down to the, the bottom of the uh, South Main Street. As we're walking down to the southern part, this is the more quieter part of the town. Uh, I was speaking to two guys, you know, and telling them what I was doing, and they reminded me. Another little bit of madness was people would actually take the ferry across to Wales. So you take the ferry across to Wales and then return back in order to drink on Good Friday. That was another insanity that people would do that they normally wouldn't do and uh, 
you know, everything's back to normal. Like, everyone's getting ready for the flacule coming in August. She is a funny not nervous. And the only thing I've noticed is that, there's not a bad thing, uh, the bookies are shut. So you see all the bookies, Patty Powers and that. So they're shut down for the uh, Good Friday. So, and this barber is shut. Oh no, it's still open. Even the barbers are open. The main street, all the little show shops. Yeah, here's another barber. So like I said, not much is closed at all. Uh, here we come into the carry out. This would have been shut. And then the pups. We walk to the end of the street. And then we'll take a look at the time. Maybe we'll there's a nice little rolling bean cafe. Get a good breakfast there. This morning I had some French toast with my grandson. I haven't had French toast in a while, so we were out of bananas. He's a mad one for bananas. Here's Boil Sports. They're shut too. Yeah, he loves bananas, so I wasn't able to uh, give him bananas, so he said, ah, try the old French toast, and he he loved it with some good old maple syrup that was brought to me from um, my subscribers from Canada when they came and visited us. Uh, here's O'Toole's Antique Shop. So we were here, part of the antique, the four antique shops in, uh, in Wexford area. I'll put the vlog up here, you can watch that if you want. And here's the end of the, the main street. So there's you know, uh, Michael Kelly's on the corner. You walk up a bit on the right hand side, you'll have the pike, which I did the vlog on the pike. And then you keep on walking up Barrick Street and uh, Kevin uh, Barry Street, and that gets you up to uh, uh, Billy Kelly's. So I'm going to stop it for now until I find a place to have a sneaky little pint of Guinness, and then we'll call it a day. And let me know if you have any uh, suggestions on places to go in October. Okay, one inter interesting uh, story from uh, the Good Friday lore, and just outside of uh, the old uh, Johnny Gainers, William G and Gainers and Sons, which is now Casey's. I did a vlog on that, so I'll put the link up on top uh, if you want to go see what the Casey's looks like nowadays. Um, I remember t Johnny telling me about, you know, the madness that leads up to uh, Good Friday. One of his, uh, his patrons that would go to the pub maybe once or twice a week, went up to him on a th Thursday, and chances he says, any chance of getting a drink tomorrow on Friday, Johnny? You know, says to him. And Johnny looked at him and he said to him, he said, yeah, but you never come here for a Friday. You know, he would never even go for the pub for a Friday. It's just the fact they are told that they couldn't, couldn't do a, have a drink in a pub. It would drive them a little bit insane. So, and that just goes to show you, like, I remember seeing the trolleys get filled with liquor on the Thursday, like a mad dash. There was a lot of house parties and everything shuts down for, you know, the Good Friday. And uh, I think they made common sense on that because it was a bit crazy. Um, the lead up to it, like, like I said, if you're gonna have a drink, you're gonna have a drink. So it should be up to the uh, the patrons and the owners of the pubs and uh, you know, if they should sell it and if, if you drink it, you know? So, I don't know, I think that's a, an interesting story, like how the mindset changed. Like, so now since 2018, so, so from, was it 1927 to 2018, there was a dry state. And then since then, everything's changed. Okay, so just about finishing off the Main Street vlog and the change of it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop my head into uh, Dugard Oils here. And we'll get a sneaky pint on a Good Friday, which would normally have been not allowed, but we'll do it today. Okay, so here's the pint of Guinness. 
so you can't get um, from Bugard Oils. Enjoy and happy Good Friday, everyone. Yeah. Oh, is he driving? Is he? Yeah. 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 Good point. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Comment on uh, where you want me to go in June, uh, June and in October. And there's still places in Ireland I have to go see.